Well, good evening, everyone. So good to be with you guys again tonight. For those of you that don't know who we are, I'm Ryan Montero. Hello, everyone. My name is Evelyn Montero. It's always an honor and a privilege to be ministering to the children of God. That's right. That's right. So as always, we are on Dr. Arthur, Arthur Frost's uh, Facebook page, and it's a privilege to share the word of God with you tonight. We'll be sharing what the Holy Spirit has laid upon our hearts to share with you tonight. And then we'll spend a few moments in prayer to pray with you, to trust God for breakthrough in your life. And also to pray what the Holy Spirit wants us to pray. Hallelujah. It's always an honor for us to hear from God what it is he wants to say to each and every one of you. You know, my, one of my favorite scriptures in Proverbs, it says a word in its season is a moment. And that's what we always trust in God for, that as we share with you what the Holy Spirit has laid upon our hearts, God has given something to Ryan, God has given something to me, and we know that as we share with you what God has shown us, we know this is also a prophetic message. So it's important for you to maybe even write down what it is that God has given us, because this is something you're going to have to keep in your heart, in the back of your mind, for the season that is coming. Amen. That's right. That's right. So let's get into the message tonight. Let's just pray. Father, we commit tonight unto you. Holy Spirit, guide and lead us as we minister to your people, Lord. We pray for everyone watching tonight, everyone that will be watching. Holy Spirit, we pray that your presence would touch every person's heart, Lord. Let your peace reign in their homes. Let your peace reign in their hearts, Father. Let them experience your presence in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Great. So let's get started. You know, when we've been going through a difficult season for a long time, we start believing what those circumstances are telling us. And those circumstances are not necessarily the truth. It's not that they're not a fact or, or a reality, but when we've been going through, for example, say you've been struggling with your health for a long time, maybe it's a few months, maybe it's a year, maybe it's two years, you know, you start believing the lie, you start believing that circumstance that you're not going to get better, that you're never going to get healthy again, you know, and that's what happens. You know, Jesus said that we're just passing through this world. We're passing through this world and we're going back home to be with Jesus. But in this world, Jesus said, we'll have troubles, we'll have challenges. But that's why Jesus came. He came to save us from our sins. He came to destroy the works of the enemy. And what are the enemy's works? Sickness, disease, failure, setback, disappointment. All these things are the works of the enemy. But like I said in the beginning, sometimes we've been facing circumstances and situations so much that we start believing what those circumstances tell us. Because, you know, circumstances have a, have a voice. When you're facing a crisis, that, that crisis speaks to you. In that, in that crisis, you hear fear. You know, it's like that crisis speaks to you and says you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You know, so-and-so, when they got that disease, they died from that disease. Or when so-and-so's business failed, their life went down the tube. You know, those circumstances speak to you. But as a Christian, as a child of God, those circumstances you face, those challenges that Satan brings in your life, God does not allow those challenges to destroy you. He uses those difficult circumstances to prepare you for a new level in life. He uses those difficult circumstances to help you grow in your faith. He uses those challenges and those difficult circumstances sometimes to draw you closer to Him that you can see His goodness and mercy in your life. So as a child of God, those challenges and circumstances are not there to destroy you, but to improve you. Now, what happens when we go through a difficult time and a difficult season, we start believing we're not going to make it. We start believing we're never going to get healthy. We start believing our business is not going to make it. We start believing we're never going to get a husband. We're never going to get a wife. We start believing all these things. And then what happens is tradition sets in our lives. We start doing certain things in certain ways without the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Remember what Jesus said. You know, the disciples of John came to Jesus and they said, you know, we're always fasting and praying, but we never see we never see your disciples fasting and praying. 
And Jesus says to them, you know, while the bridegroom is with them, there's no need to fast and pray because they're rejoicing with the bridegroom. You know, when the bridegroom leaves, then it'll be a time to fast and pray. Then he continues to talk about a patch. You cannot put a new unshrunken patch on an old garment because when you wash that old garment, that patch shrinks and it tears. Then he continues to say in the third parable, he says the parable about the new wine and the old wine skins. Then he says to them to confirm what he's saying, what happens is if you put new wine in old wine skins, the wine skins will burst. So what was Jesus trying to tell them? He was telling them, you're so set in your old religious ways. You're so set in all these different ways. You must do this, you must do that, and you must do this to get your breakthrough or to do that, that you're missing the whole point. You see, that's why Jesus came. When Jesus came, he started preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Before that, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law did not know anything about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, which we today have the privilege to experience by the Holy Spirit and through the word of God. So when Jesus came and he said to them, you know what? You want something new in your life. You want that new wine. You want to see change in your life. You want to see breakthrough in your life. You want to experience God more and more. But unless you change, unless you put new wineskins, unless you become like that new wineskin, you'll never be able to receive the new wine that God has for you. And that's the same with our lives. We need to change our ways, not according to religious practices, but we need to change our ways according to how Jesus taught us, how the Word of God taught us. You see, we need to get all the old mindsets out and we need to hear what God has to say. It's not enough to know God according to His works alone. You know, it's not enough to know God just as the healer, as a deliverer, as your protector and all those things. No, we need to learn God's ways. And that's what Jesus taught. He taught us the ways of our home, where we're where we going. He taught us the ways of the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we need to be able to maintain the new. Now, God wants to bring the new in your life. Whether it be your finances going through a difficult season, whether it be your marriage in trouble, whether it be your children facing difficulties, whether it be your health, God wants to bring the new. But in order for us to maintain that new, maintain your deliverance, maintain your breakthrough, we have to learn God's ways. Just like he instructed the disciples of John, we need to put the new wine that he wants to give into the new wineskins. And we are those wineskins. God wants to bring breakthrough in your life. He wants to bring, have, he wants you to have a good marriage. He wants your children to be successful. He has every good plan for you, but we need to learn his ways in able to maintain that. Before I start praying for you and tell you what the Lord told me to pray with you tonight, the question you need to ask yourself, do you believe? You know, when the woman with the issue of blood, you know, her issue of blood was for 12 years. That's a long time to be struggling with a sickness or a disease or a disappointment or a failure in business. 12 years is a long, 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 long time. You know, I can guarantee you her circumstances were speaking to her. You're never going to make it. You see, you've gone to every doctor. You've spent all the money you've had and no one is going to help you. Now, that's the voice of Satan in her life. But when she heard about Jesus, the Messiah, could this be the Messiah, the Savior? Listen to the miracles, the blind see, the lame walk, the dead are raised back to life. She decided, I'm putting a demand on this anointing. I'm putting a demand. I know, or she said to herself, all I have to do is just touch the hem of his garments and I will be made well. And she came and she pushed through the crowds and she crawled through the crowds and she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And he experienced power out of him, going out of him. And he said, who touched me? And she eventually came up and she said, it was me. You know what he said to her? My daughter, your faith has made you well. Do you believe God can do something great in your life? Do you believe God wants to do something new in your life? Do you believe God wants to rescue your marriage? Do you believe God wants to rescue your business? Do you believe he wants to rescue your children? Do you believe he wants to deliver you and protect you from COVID-19? Do you believe all these things? Do you believe he's able? Well, I believe. I believe and that's what he wants to do. You see, the Lord said to me, many areas in your life and many areas in the lives of your families are not dead. 
Your destiny is not dead. Those circumstances have been lying to you. Your calling is not dead. Your health is not dead. It's not dead. Your, your good future is not dead. Your successful business or good career is not dead. The Lord says it's just sleeping. It's just sleeping. It's just dormant. And we're going to wake it up tonight. We're going to wake it up tonight. So I'm going to pray with you now. We're going to pray together. You're going to pray. I'm going to pray. We're going to pray. And you're going to release the power of God out of your mouth as you pray. I want you, this is what the Lord said we must pray. You must tell whatever challenge you're facing. If it's your career that you're struggling in, you need to say, wake up career in Jesus name. If you have challenges in your marriage, you need to say, wake up marriage in Jesus name. If you feel like, and I hear the Lord say, many of you feel like your destinies and your callings, nothing's happening. You say, destiny, wake up in Jesus name. Calling, wake up in Jesus name. So we're going to take a few minutes and pray. I'm going to pray and you're going to pray where you are at home. So Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus, these are the words you've given us. You said that our lives are not dead. Our callings are not dead. Father, it's just sleeping. Now we are standing in our authority given to us in the name of Jesus. The power given to us by the Holy Ghost. We command our destinies, wake up in the name of Jesus. We command our marriages, wake up in the name of Jesus. We command our children. Children, wake up in the name of Jesus. We command our health, wake up in the name of Jesus. We command our callings, wake up in the name of Jesus. We command our health, wake up in the name of Jesus. We command our marriages, wake up in the name of Jesus. What is that area you need to wake up? You need to tell it in the name of Jesus. Wake up in Jesus' name. Father, we command every area which is dormant, every area which is sleeping in their lives to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your resurrection power fall upon their lives. Let your resurrection power fall upon their destinies, on their careers, on their marriages, on their children, on their good futures, on their families. In the mighty name of Jesus, wake up in Jesus' name. Wake up in Jesus' name. Wake up in Jesus' name. name. Thank you, Father. Now, because of time, my wonderful, lovely your wife is going to minister what God has told her but that's what you must go and do before you go to bed tonight you tell that area in your life you wake up in Jesus name and it's so it shall be done when you wake up tomorrow morning you pray it wake up in Jesus name and it shall be so according to your belief hallelujah myself and Ryan we didn't discuss what we would be sharing with you tonight So now that I've heard what he's saying, you will hear how what God has given me is now going to complete the picture. I saw the word healing. You see, healing in our lives cannot happen when we hold on to the old things. It's not always offense that I'm talking about. But even the old way of doing things, the old way of approaching things, the old way of looking at things. We cannot move forward. We cannot receive healing. We cannot let blockages in our lives get removed if we hold on to the old things. You see, I I had this sentence that I want to give you and it's a promise that I believe God wants us to give you. And this is that God has bigger and greater And that is why we cannot hold on to the old. I was reminded of the Israelites in Exodus 16 when they were walking in the desert and they were starting to complain by Moses and they said, we miss Egypt. We miss the pots of the meat. There are even translations that say we miss the garlic. We miss the herbs. We miss the garlic. We miss the meat. Now you've brought us to this desert to die. And they were holding on to what was in the past. They were holding on what was behind them. Old way of thinking, old mindsets, limiting, limiting mindsets. This is something God has spoken to us even about. Our mindsets are the things that are limiting God. What we believe and what we are trusting God for can limit God. The Israelites were doing the same. They were looking back at what they had, but what they were failing to look at is that God was taking them to even bigger and better. 
But because they did not have that mindset, that generation had to die so that the new generation could enter the promised land that God had for them. So this is the prophetic message that God has given me for you. We cannot receive healing. We cannot receive deliverance. We cannot move forward to the bigger and the better that God has for us if we still hold on to the past, if we hold on to old things, old way of doing, old mindsets, limited mindsets. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A joyful heart brings healing not only to the body, but to the soul as well. But one whose heart is crushed struggles with sickness and oppression. When our hearts are crushed, when we don't allow God to really deal with those things in our lives, we cannot move forward to the bigger and the better that God has for us. God has given me Romans 8.28 that all of us should know. All things are working together for our good. That is a promise from the word of God. Everything that you've gone through, there are many things that God did not want for you to have to go through. But this promise is telling us that God will let all things work together for our good. The question is, are we allowing him to? That is the challenge. That is the question you must ask yourself. Am I really allowing God to let all those things that I've gone through work together for me? Am I allowing God? You see, I'm reminded right now of the image of an animal if it, if it has a wound, a sore leg. When, when someone wants to touch it, it wants to bite, right? That's what we do. God wants to touch things. He wants to sort things out. He wants to bring healing. But what do we do? We bite back. We don't want someone to address those things. It makes us feel uncomfortable. It hurts. It's, it stirs. It lets things come out into the open that we'd rather just push aside. But God says, you want me to come through for you in a big and wonderful way? But you are still holding on to old ways. You are still holding on to what happened to you 10 years ago. You are still holding on to what happened to you a month ago. You are still having that old frame of reference, that old way of thinking, <coughs> but now you want me to do new things? You should be giving me those old things. Exchange your ashes for my beauty, says God. The question is, do we do it? And this is what the prophetic message is that God is giving me. We must put God in control. We must allow him to help us let those things go. Small mindedness. It is us who can limit God. It is us. As I was praying for this session, I just feel that for many of you, really all of us, let me say this. We all need healing all the time. Sometimes we put on a brave face and we say, this thing that happened to me, I'm just moving on from it. But it actually knocked us a little bit. The Bible makes it clear that the Holy Spirit is the one that brings the healing and the restoration. And he's the one that shows us. He's the one that reveals and convicts and says, Evelyn, you did not really deal with this thing. You're not really trusting me for this breakthrough because you still want, you still putting your finger in the pie. You still want to sort it out yourself. God is the one that enables us to move forward. So what I'm going to pray for you tonight, and this is for all of you. We all find ourselves in situations where we feel that there's a blockage. There's a hindrance. <clears throat> It can be anything. Maybe it's an offense that you don't even realize you're walking around with. Maybe it's a pain and a form of disappointment that you are still dragging around with you. It is actually hindering you from the bigger and the better that God is promising us. 
You see, our God is the God of abundance, but do we really live it? Do we really pray it? Do we really push in like the woman with the issue of blood? She did it. She, she knew, I only have to touch the hem of his God, of his garment. That was her mindset. I don't need him to lay his hands on me. I just need to touch him. And I know I will get healed. I know I will get deliverance. I know I will get my breakthrough. Do we trust God this way? Do we trust him this way? Are we still holding on to the old? Are we still thinking small? Are we still limiting God with what is going up here? So now I'm going to pray for you. And this is a serious matter because we don't realize that we need healing all the time. <clears throat> we don't realize that we need God's healing all the time. It could have been something that someone said yesterday to you over the phone, or it could have been a remark that you heard at work a month ago. We all need healing all the time. God has bigger and better for us. Let us not make the same mistake as the Israelites in Exodus 16 to say, but Lord, I'm complaining. Things are not changing. Things are not happening. Let's rather pray, Lord, show me what it is I need to deal with so that we can say like Paul, I'm striving to what is lying ahead of me. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit, I thank you for your word in season. Father, I pray for every person right now who is watching this. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you are the only one that can show each and every one of us what is really, what are we still holding on to, Lord, mm. that is hindering us from the promised land? What is hindering us from the bigger and the better that you have for us? Holy Spirit, I'm trusting you right now that every person that is watching this will now start praying a prayer. Maybe it's a prayer of repentance. Maybe it's a prayer of forgiving someone. Maybe it's a prayer of just saying, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my small thinking. I'm sorry, Jesus, that I have not been trusting you like I'm supposed to. I'm sorry, Holy Spirit, that I'm not always asking you to be my guide and to show me what it is you want me to do. So whatever that prayer is that you want to pray right now, this is your opportunity to do so. When your heart is backing what you are saying with your lips, that is when faith comes. That is when the anointing comes. That's when the authority comes that God has given you. So Father, I pray for every person right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray now for your revelation to come upon every person. Show them what those hindrances are. Show them what those blockages are in their lives. Those things that are hindering them from moving forward. Tonight we repent for all the times that we've been complaining. I see that we've been complaining, Father. We've been complaining like the Israelites did. Lord, but look how well it went 10 years ago. Look how well things were going three years ago. Look where I am today. Lord Jesus, forgive us for murmuring. Forgive us for complaining because we know, Father, that you let all these things work together for us. You are busy. You are the master plan. You've already worked it out. You are the master of working out plans. You've already lined it up. You've already prepared it for us. You have already prepared the promised land for us. So I say thank you, Lord Jesus, forgive us. Forgive us for murmuring and complaining. Now in the name of Jesus, Father, we, tonight we want to let go of wrong way of thinking. Yes. We want to let go of limited thinking. Yes. We want to say expand our broad and broaden our way of thinking in Jesus name expand our way of thinking expand make it bigger father we want to make room for you yes. we want to make room for that promise we want to make room for the blessings we want to make room for the breakthrough and the healing and the deliverance we want to make room in Jesus name father make it bigger expand us father in Jesus name 
Father, Father, I pray for a new level of faith for your children. Yes. A new level of faith yes, to trust you even more. Thank to Jesus. not pray with their lips, but their hearts are far from you. Yes. I pray that these people watching this, that the, when they pray, that their hearts are in tune with you. Yes. That they pray with faith yes. and not with fear and not with doubt. But when they pray, they are really in tune with you. Their hearts are with you. Yes. Father, they pray with faith. Yes. They are completely trusting you in Jesus. Jesus name Holy Spirit I pray for your comfort there are people watching tonight who are saying I'm hurt I've been disappointed people close to me have disappointed me Father, I pray for those people those are hindrances saints these are the hindrances that are keeping you from moving forward father I pray for those who are disappointed tonight because those who are close to them those who they thought had their backs turned out to be not so faithful Lord tonight we choose to let it go. Tonight we choose to forgive those people. Tonight we forgive those people who have hurt us and disappointed us. We give them to you, Father. Yes, you sort it out. Yes, you sort it out. Yes, we give it to you. You sort it out in yes, Jesus' name. Father, I want to move forward. I want you to say that right now with me. I want to move forward. I want to move forward. I want to step into my promised land. I want to step into what you have for me. I want it to the full. I want it to the maximum in Jesus' name. That's your declaration. Father, I want it to the full. I want it to the maximum. I want that promised land. I want that promise that you've given me in Jesus' name. The bigger, the better. Yes. I will not look back like the Israelites did, Father. Yes, I'm sorry that I've done it. And now that I've repented, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. I'm going to yes, my Lord. promised land. Yes, no more limited thinking. Yes, no more small-mindedness. Yes, no more fear and yes, no more doubt. I'm trusting my God. Yes, because every step I take is a step closer to my promised land. Yes, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name in Jesus name I have a few words of knowledge first of all I see there's a, a, a lady you 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 were married or you have a young boy and you were married and I see that your husband has abandoned you he's left you you're you start you're with your your young boy and I just want to encourage you the Lord says he will take care of you now the Lord says that he's your husband and even though your husband has abandoned you, the Lord says he won't abandon you. He's going to make a way for you for your provision and the Lord says he will heal and restore your heart. So whoever you are, whoever you are, lady, God has got you under his wings. He'll take care of you through this difficult season in Jesus name. Then I see there's a man, you're, you're a handyman, you work with your hands, you've got like a workshop at home, you work with different tools, and I see your hand got stuck in a machine or stuck in a vice or something happened and you need your hands to work. And I see you're very concerned about your tendons, very concerned about your muscles restoring, getting full function in your hands. We're just going to pray now for a miracle. Father, whoever that man is who got injured from the workplace, who hurt his hand, it's his hand, Father. Lord, now we pray for a miracle in the name of Jesus. We command that hand to be restored in the name of Jesus. We command those tendons to be healed in the name of Jesus. We command those bones to be healed and restored in the name of Jesus. We command those muscles to be healed and to be restored in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command complete restoration, complete recovery and restoration in that man's hand in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that his hand will heal, that he will have full functionality, and he will work with his hands, Father. Let it be so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I see there's a man, you're a married man, and you're stuck in pornography. You're stuck, you have the spirit of lust, you find yourself getting these urges, and you don't want this in your life. It's not that you want to do these things, but it's in your life, it's affecting your marriage, it's affecting your life, and you don't want it anymore in your life. So I'm going to pray with you. God's going to set you free. We're going to start off with repentance in Jesus' name. And we're going to forgive, ask God to forgive you, and you're going to forgive yourself. You must forgive yourself. I know it's that spirit that is harassing you. And once this thing goes, once you forgive from your heart, the door is open, it will go. Well, Father, say, Father, I repent. Father, please forgive me for these urges that I have. To look at all these evil things, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for all the things that I've done, for all the things that it's made me to do, for all the things that I've looked at. 
Forgive me, Father, that I've even allowed this pornography to affect my marriage and my intimacy. Please help me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me in Jesus' name. Now forgive yourself. Tell you forgive yourself. I forgive you. Whatever your name is, say, I forgive you for looking at the pornography. I forgive myself for doing all these evil things, for bringing this darkness into my house. I forgive myself because Jesus has forgiven me. Now I release myself back to God. Release yourself. Say, Lord Jesus, I give myself back to you. I release myself and forgive myself from this hatred and the self-hatred and condemnation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There it goes. Father, now we stand in authority. I rebuke. I rebuke you, wicked spirit of lust. I'm looking at you and I'm telling you now, out of that man's life. Out of that man's life now. Mighty Lord Jesus. I'm telling you now, out in Jesus' name. Out. That is not your temple. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm looking at you, you wicked spirit of lust. I bind you. I cancel you. Out in the name of Jesus. Out. In the name of Jesus, you go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray the blood of Jesus. Even that spirit, you haven't had a woman come and come and do things to you in your at night when you're sleeping. I cancel that now in the name of Jesus. Whatever Satan has planted in your spirit through those sexual dreams, I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Wherever that spirit's affected your marriage, out. In the name of Jesus, wherever that spirit has affected your finances, out! In the name of Jesus, I cancel every attack, every plan, everything is done in Jesus' name. You are free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us just end. Father, we thank you that you have now started something tonight. In this session, Father, healing. Yes, Lord. We speak healing over yes. every heart, every person that is watching this. Father, whatever those hindrances are, I pray for your healing. Yes, I pray for your healing. Yes, I pray for your healing. Yes, In Jesus' name, Father, uproot those things that are not of you. Uproot now those things that are not of you. Uproot it now those things that are not of you. Father, we are going. We are moving forward yes, in Jesus' yes. name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Time up. Yes. Well, that's it for tonight. <laughs> we wish we had more time with you, but we unfortunately don't. Thank you for joining us. It was such a privilege to minister with you, to pray with you. We leave you with a wonderful fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and we leave you in faith. In <laughs> Jesus' name. God bless you, everyone. We'll see you again, hopefully, real soon. Bye-bye, everyone.